good morning participants uh, i am dr asma selvi i am heading center for excellence in brain science at niftim center wood so today this lecture is on value addition of meat and poultry products so uh, first we look at the uh, status prospects of meat industry in india um, india hold highest number of livestock head in the world and it stands first in cattle and buffalo population and number 2 in goat population number 3 in sheep population so the meat sector contributes to national economy uh, first farmers for the farmers it becomes a source of income and it provides employment to the uh, youth in the rural region and it helps in earning foreign exchange because india is the number one bovine meat exporter in the world and uh, the meat could be converted into number of value added products and that also increases the status of the uh, producer or farmer and uh, the animal after spending after completion of the productive age it could contribute for the sustainability of the uh, livestock sector and it's a very good source of protein and other nutrients because in the more than 50 percentage of us are deficient in protein and this being a very good source of protein um the major meat that is exported from india is the buffalo buffalo accounts to 89 percentage of meat that is exported from india and it is exported to countries like vietnam malaysia egypt iraq um and if you look at the per capita consumption um of meat per year uh, for indian it is 5 kg and this is likely to increase to 7 kg in next 10 years but this is far far less when compared to 80 kg which is consumed in the developed countries so it shows the very good scope uh, for the meat processing sector in india the demand for the meat is increasing in india the other statistics is that 70 percentage of the indians are vegetarian where it is another country it is 94 percentage sorry 70 percentage of the indians are non vegetarian whereas in developed countries it is 94 percentage uh the slaughtering sectors status of infrastructure available for slaughtering of animal uh, still it is uh, done in illegal uh, way so we have 3600 registered slaughterhouses 30000 illegal slaughter places 30 apida approved abattoir 74 apida approved meat processing plants 6 export inspection authority approved poultry processing plant and 3 uh, approved ea approved egg product plant and 220 processing centers and if you look at the top five meat producing states in india uttar pradesh stands first with 1.2 million metric ton followed by west bengal andhra pradesh haryana tamil nadu tamil nadu accounts to around 0.35 million metric ton of meat a uh, meat contribution various meat contribution if you look at 36 percentage of the meat that is produced in india is poultry meat 26 percentage is buffalo meat 18 percentage is goat meat 9 percentage is pig meat 8 percentage is sheep meat and rest are the rabbit all that includes 6 percentage so nutritive coming to the nutritive value of meat everybody knows meat is a very good source of protein and all the internal organs are loaded with uh, loaded with vitamins and minerals um so it provides b complex vitamins zinc iron okay. so as i already mentioned 68 percentage of the uh, people in india are protein deficient with less muscle health so which emphasizes the importance of consumption of meat so coming to meat processing sectors in india so though we are the largest producer of Uh, number one, number two, number three in the uh, livestock. The amount that we process is uh, much less. In India, we process only three percentage of what we produce. Whereas in developed countries, it is sixty-five to eighty percentage. I mean, as such, the demand for the processed food is very less in India, but it is definitely growing. 
Whereas in Western countries, you hardly get to see a butcher shop where they sell the uh, raw meat as it. It will be processed into some product or at least it is cut into some form only then it could be this sold. That is what is the trend there. And the trend in, the, in India is definitely changing. So Indian uh, scenario is facing the need for uh, heat and serve product, ready to cook product, ready to eat product is increasing. So what is meat processing? So meat processing is uh, uh, any treatment that is given to meat which brings in chemical and physical changes in the nature state of the meat is called meat processing. For example, the sausage that we prepare is called meat processing. And why we process or why we make sausage? Because it adds value to the meat and it provides variety and convenience to the consumer. And better utilization of low value cuts. Low value cuts at less demand in the market and that could be converted into value added products. And the processing helps in extending the shelf life of the meat. And you can also add other non-meat ingredients, uh, reduce the cost or increase the volume of the product. The demand for the processed product is now increasing for a number of reasons. One, we are very less time. Uh, we tend to spend less time in the kitchen and increasing the nuclear family. And younger generations are now looking for ready to eat, ready to cook, convenient meat products. The products like nugget, frozen nugget, all that is increased. The demand is greatly increasing. It's for the convenience of the youngsters to just fry and eat at home. Okay, we'll just have a small introduction about how the meat is processed. So meat processing or slaughtering is divided into three sections, pre-slaughter section, slaughtering section and post-slaughtering section. So in pre-slaughtering section, it just accounts how it is cultivated, the farm, what are the um, practices, uh, general practice that is done in breeding of the uh, animal or birds, what is, what feed regulations, how the feed is given, what is the, uh, how the disease is controlled, what kind of what treatment is given. So how the farm basically starts with how the animal is produced in the farm. It is then transported to the processing unit. Uh, transportation of animal uh, is very important. The animal should not be overcrowded. Even if it's a bird, it should not be overcrowded. It should not be stressed. Um, and it should not travel a longer time. And it should not be traveled at time when it is very hot. So when these precautions are not taken, uh, animal will become stressed. The bird will become stressed. So the, the challenge of uh, the birds and animals becoming stressed is that that affects the quality of the meat. That affects the quality of the meat. So uh, pre-slaughter care is very important only when the animal is not stressed. That result in good quality meat at the end. Uh, once when it comes to the processing plant, it is slaughtered. Next slide I tell you the slaughtering steps. After it is slaughtered, it goes to the post slaughtering process where the meat is uh, further cleaned, washed, processed, cut, required cut. It is then packed and then stored. It is then distributed to the consumer. So it, it involves pre slaughtering stage, slaughtering stage, and post slaughtering stage. So here is an example how the poultry is processed. First, uh, you get live birds from the approved uh, supplier. Inspection of the bird is done there, uh, health of the bird, uh, weight, uh, this to be done uh, before it is unloaded. Then uh, unloading, uh, unloading, uh, it is then hanged on the oak. Uh, the first step in poultry processing is stunning. So stunning is the process where we make the animal unconscious. The number of ways by which we can make the animal unconscious, either by electrical stunning or gas stunning or by mechanical stunning. In poultry, Stunning is usually done by using electrical stunning. Why the animal is to be stunned or why the animal is to be made unconscious is that, such that the animal will not experience pain during further processing. So first step is stunning. So during unloading um, or during hanging on the cycle, uh, anti-mortem inspection is done. So inspection of the poultry, whether it is healthy, whether it doesn't have any um, infection in it, is just checked. If any animal is found not healthy, uh, again there is a different judgment, like if they, they could suspect it, they can make it fit or they can even uh, 
condemn it based on the judgment. So first step is stunning, so where we make the animal unconscious. The next step is bleeding. So bleeding is done for a very short time. Again, ble bleeding is the process where we remove the blood from the bird. bird. Because blood is a very good medium for the growth of microorganisms and that also gives poor appearance to the meat. So after stunning, the jugular vein is cut such that the, all the blood will be gushed out of the body. And bleeding to be done not more than two minutes. If over bleeding is done, that will also affect the quality of the meat. So after stunning, we go for bleeding. So bleeding is followed by scalding. So scalding is the process where we loosen the feather from the um, bird. We have again various classification scalding uh, based on the temperature and the time it is scalded. High temperature and for long time, uh, it, it helps in easy loosening of the feather from the uh, bird. Again, uh, if we do it high temperature for a longer time, the skin will not be intact. Sometimes you will have cracks on the skin. And when the scalding is done for lower time, uh, it will be difficult to remove the feather. Sometimes the manual deepening or defeathering has to be done. So scalding has to be done at appropriate time and temperature and that varies for different birds. After defeathering, scalding it goes to defeathering. So defeathering is the process where the feather is removed and this is this consists of a drum which contains um, rubber protections. As it rotates, as the feather is already loose, it helps in removing the feather from the meat. Then the oil gland and the feet is removed, after which the bird is rehanged. It then goes to evisceration process. So evisceration is the process where all the internal organs are removed and the internal organs are again inspected during post-mortem inspection if any abnormalities are found and those birds are rejected. After inspection, the giblets are harvested. Giblets are nothing but the gizzard, neck, uh, kidney, heart and liver together is called as giblet. These are the edible uh, offals of the bird. Then the head, the crop and lungs are removed. Then the birds are completely rinsed or washed. It is then chilled. After chilling, it is weighed, uh, weighing or it is graded. Uh, then it is packed. Sometimes the whole bird is packed as such or it is cut into various cuts. Only thighs, various cuts are done. It is then packed and then it is frozen. So these are the steps involved in poultry processing. Similarly, the steps for uh, our slaughtering of other animal is more or less same. For example, if it is cattle, any animal uh, in a processing uh, slaughtering unit, it should be stunned. There are certain religious methods where stunning is not practiced straight away they bleed it. But all, I mean, uh, but by regulation, stunning is mandatory. So any animal is to be stunned. Based on the animal, the method of stunning differs. Large animals are stunned by mechanical method by using piston where they hit the brain at the right location such that the animal becomes unconscious. So for cattle, after stunning, it goes to bleeding. And if the skin is uh, to be preserved, they go for dehydrating and preservation of the skin. Then evisceration, spreading, and you get the carcass. The same with the sheep and goat also. After bleeding, it goes for decapitation where the head is removed and then the legs, legs are removed and deep skinning is also called the splaying where the skin is removed. Then evisceration, splitting and you get the carcass. And pig, pig usually skin is not removed. Uh, pig undergoes <coughs> scalding. Again, scalding is a process where it is dipped in hot water and the hair is removed after which it goes for evisceration. So only difference between the other animal and pig is that where we don't remove the skin. It only goes for scalding to remove the air. Uh, meat cut. Uh, so the demand for meat cut, beef, poultry, um, any large animals, small animals, the, the demand for meat cuts is now increasing because each cut or each portion has a different texture, different flavor. Um, uh, accordingly, it is used for different dishes or prefer, uh, different preferences. So, uh, so this is the cut of a chicken uh, and this is the cut of cut goat, various cuts of the goat. Okay. So now the demand for the cut meat, or cut poultry meat or goat meat is increasing. Because if I prefer only the thigh part or the wing part, now it is available in such a way uh, based on the uh, demand of the consumer. This is the cut of goat. 
and this is the uh, cut of pigs. Uh, now the uh, the shape of the uh, meat retaining unit is changing. Um, even now, like you can see, number of butcher shops which they hang the meat from morning to evening, uh, not refrigerating. Uh, but this is changing. Uh, 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 even if not in rural areas, definitely in urban areas, where it is uh, when, uh, in a confined area, when refrigerated place, still room. So this you can see the images where the, how the trend is now changing. People also prefer uh, to buy uh, meat from uh, this kind of uh, hygienic place. So there's a race for organized retailing. People prefer it. And there are lots of uh, quick serving restaurants now increasing like KFC, Subway, McDonald's, all that. And e-market is increasing, which all increases the demand for the uh, processed product in the market. So this is um, uh, um, it's the other uh, meat processing um, uh, brand like Lysius. Uh, Lysius now processing all meat, fish products, tender cuts, fresh to home. These are the other brands. You get uh, rabbit meat by uh, rapid meats. So the number of players are now uh, into this meat processing sectors, primary processing and secondary processing. So a uh, first uh, uh, way by which we can preserve any commodity is drying. So drying is the process where removing moisture from the product as the meat uh, from which moisture is removed, the meat will have extended shelf life. Uh, so this product could be stored in room temperature for a longer time. This meat, dried meat product could be used in preparation of variety of products. Could be soup powder, uh, other dishes. It could be used in preparation of other products. So meat drying is one of the traditional and very old technique of preserving meat. So meat uh, to be if to be dried, it should be stripped. Not the whole meat is dried. It should be stripped, hanged, and then dried. There are a number of factors that influences the uh, drying uh, rate and the quality of the final product, and few of which are air temperature. Higher the air temperature, faster is the rate of drying. And humidity, uh, humidity should be low when we want to have a high rate of drying. Air circulation, okay. So these are the factors that influence the uh, drying of the uh, meat. Meats that are suitable for drying. Uh, best meat, like you can get a very good dehydrated product from uh, beef, buffalo, game, a goat, game meats like beef, uh, um, camel meat, yak, all that could be dried. Meat that is less suitable for drying is pork because it contains high amount of fat, which may lead to rancidity. So pork preferably not dried. And poultry is also not dried because of its texture and the flavor. The best meat that is used for drying are beef, buffalo, uh, goat meat, and few game meats. Camel and yak is also dried. So when you want to dry the drier meat, when the good quality, you can get good dehydrated product when we only when we use good quality raw material. So preferably lean meat to be used uh, because fat meat contains more amount of fat and that may lead to rancidity. So it should be lean meat. A medium age is preferred. Uh, it should be in healthy and good condition. Uh, all visible fats that is present is removed. It is then uh, uh, visible fat is then removed. Uh, if there is large amount of connective tissues, uh, that is also removed because higher the amount of connective tissue, tough the meat will be. It then dried. And these are the uh, dehydrated, popular dehydrated product that is available in the uh, market. And Biltong is very popular in South Africa, Turkey, in North America. And this is the product in Turkey and other countries. And of course, even we in Tamil Nadu, we have a product called Upukandam, which is traditionally dried meat product. So meat drying is one of the oldest method of preserving meat. So right temperature, right meat, and right method of drying with dehydrated product 
of high quality which could be used straight away for the consumption after frying or cooking or this could be an ingredient in preparation of number of other products. Um, so the factors that influence drying as you all know like pH, water activity, moisture, sometimes it is salted and then it is dried, the amount of salt also influences the keeping quality of the meat and um, method of drying, uh, whether it is smoked or not smoked, whether salt is added or not salt added, there's a number of factors that influence the, um, um, the quality of the dried product and how you store the product after uh, drying is also very important. Freeze-dried product, the demand for the freeze-dried meat product is also increasing because it has a very good dehydration property. Quality of the uh, dried product, um, so because as it contains fat, it could lead to lipid oxidation. Accordingly, we'll have to take precautions, trimming of the fats, and then appropriately packing to prevent lipid oxidation. So this is one issue with the drying of meat. The benefits of uh, the dehydrated meat, um, so it contains high protein, um, high fat, uh, I fat, it contains not only saturated fatty acids, it also contains polyunsaturated fatty acid, which is good for health. And as it is dried, the electrolyte content in the meat will be high. As I already told you, it also contains uh, dipeptides uh, and other ALA and DHA, uh, other fatty acids, essential fatty acids, which is good for health. And it is also a good source of metals like iron, zinc and magnesium. And after drying, so drying is one way by which meat could be preserved. And then next is the intermediate moisture meat. So intermediate moisture meat is more like drying, but here the moisture content will be higher. And this, um, uh, by the addition of solutes, it could be either sugar or salt, uh, which help in extending the shelf life of the product. So this product will not be as dry as the dried product. It will be watery and juicy. And this product can also be stored at room temperature, not necessary to be refrigerated. So after intermediate moisture foods, and this is another product which is called a steep rumen tracker. So this rumen is cut, uh, it is uh, cured and then dried. It's then dried, it's one of the important delicacy. Back in, as you all know, back in is uh, dried uh, salt cured pork. And it is typically made from various fats. It could be made from belly and low fat uh, fat. Okay. This could be eaten um, as this side is eaten as a, uh, as a side dish, or it could be taken as such, or it could be an ingredient preparation of other dishes. There are lots of dry products available in the market in Western countries. And then um, the classification of the um, value added product based on processing. One is emulsion, uh, then restructured, enrobed, cured, and smoked meat products. Um, and then, based on the uh, variety, it could be semi cooked product, fried product, or RTE product. And based on functions, the value addition can be a designer meat or health diet products. So emulsion, so emulsion now you get lots of products in the market like sausages, uh, nuggets, all that is prepared from meat, meat emulsion. So meat is made into emulsion with water and other ingredient. Um, uh, sometimes we also use uh, low quality cut and all that is all mixed together and it forms an emulsion. If this emulsion could be made into various shapes. It could be made in the shape of nugget, it could be made in the shape of cutlet, it could be made in the shape of patties or sausages and it could be preserved. Okay. And uh, in the formation of emulsion, we can add binders and extenders. The binders or the uh, protein compound that is added to the uh, meat. It could be soy protein, it could be egg powder or egg liquid and we can also use extenders of which is nothing but carbohydrates in the form of flour. So this uh, uh, not only help in increasing the volume of the um, product, it also helps in providing the required texture to the product. So it could be shaped of required shapes and help in retaining the flavor and the shape of the product. So meat emulsion based product 
the demand for emulsion based product is increasing nowadays beef sausages uh, beef nuggets or patties it's, it's increasing and the process is very simple it only requires an emulsion device which is like mincing of the meat with the uh, water and the other ingredients the fat uh, the protein that and the water that is present in the meat as it's all mixed together it forms a nice emulsion and this could be shaped to various shapes like uh, various shapes and a number of other ingredients can be added to it to have flavor to the product so meat emulsion so meat is chopped finely chopped and uh, all and when you do any processing the integrity of meat is disturbed and this will enhance the growth of microorganisms so all these to be done at uh, low temperature such that the microbial safety is taken care so meat is chopped uh, it is then other ingredients are mixed it is uh, it could be um, after which it could be stuck into any so for, if, for for example if it is sausage it could be filled into um, uh, both edible and non edible uh, casings So if it is edible casing, it could be consumed as such. If it is a non-edible casing, you need to remove the casing and then you need to consume. You can form. This is like forming uh, the emulsion into various shapes you want. After forming, it is cooked and it is packed and stored. So cooking helps in retaining the shape of the product. Okay. So next is restructure the meat product. So restructure is like partially or completely disassemble the product, and then you reform it again the required shape you want. You can just see um, this is the uh, biryani cubes. So where it is uh, uh, partially or completely disassembled, uh, finely chopped or something like that, it is then reformed to have a particular shape. Uh, chunking or flaking or tearing, any way by which you can um, uh, disassemble the. Particle, and then you can make it to shapes of blocks or slices or cubes of any shape which you want for different applications. So you can see this is a slice for different applications. For example, it could be for the uh, sandwiches, and here you have cubes, this is biryani cubes, where you have uniform shape and texture throughout. Uh, then everybody will get the same texture. So this is called biryani cubes. So all this is called restructured meat product. So uh, uh, here the process is again the chilled meat is then grinding or flaking or cubing whatever you want uh, based on the process you can just reform a reformed particles other ingredients are mixed it is then bound to a particular shape and is then frozen and packed end drop the meat product uh, end dropping um, uh, it increases the sensory or palatability of the product. um so end dropping it involves two steps battering and breading so the meat product whatever the product that is uh, formed that is dipped into a uh, batter it is then breaded and then it could be stored as such frozen and stored as such or it could be straight away um uh, consumed after cooking okay so the coating uh, uh, which we keep the batter and uh, bread crumb coating or egg coating anything the coating that which you give It increases the palatability and appearance of the product. So, end drop the meat product is another product um, after emulsion restructure. End drop meat product. So, here uh, pre dusting of the meat with the dry flour is the first step. After which, it is uh, dipped in a batter. It is then breaded again, and then it is deep fried. A uh, fry could be done based on when the consumer preference deep fry or shallow fry, and then get the final product. So, this is end drop the meat product. A uh, cured and smoked product. Now, smoking once was very intensive. There is again we have lots of classification on uh, smoked uh, meat product, high intensity, low intensity. Or the smoking was very intense earlier days, and it was done for a longer time. Uh, so, because smoking was the only way by which meat was preserved. Now, smoking is done to enhance the flavor. Smoking is preferred for the flavor, and smoking is combined with lots of other technology like addition of salt, addition of um, Spices, low temperature preservation. So now smoking is not very harsh, and this is mainly done to have the smoke flavor. Okay, the number of uh, way by which we can there are number of methods by which smoking could be done. Uh, and then curing, curing is another way by which meat is preserved. Again, you have two methods of curing: dry curing and brine curing. So the dry curing it is uh, mixed with the dry ingredients, and brine curing the brine is prepared and the meat meat is. Immersed inside the brine. 
So here the salt concentration is increased and that helps in increasing the uh, shelf life of the product. Now, curing and smoking is not done as a sole method of preservation such that uh, it is heavily smoked or heavily cured such that the salt concentration final product is high. It is combined with number of processes like meat packing, heat low temperature, addition of preservative, addition of other ingredients. So curing and smoking is nowadays not very harsh, mainly done to improve the uh, texture and the flavor of the product. And now the semi-cooked meat product is facing uh, greatly. Uh, the marinated product, which is located to see lots of marinated products available in the market, be it chicken marinated or mutton marinated, even fish, lots of marinated uh, fish product is available in the market. All this increases the convenience of the consumer. So you just have to take it either cook it, fry it, or shallow or deep fry it. So marinated product, the demand for the marinated product is increasing. And semi-cooked meat product, the broad meat is again, already I told you, it could be restructured or uh, emulsified meat product is formed. And it's partially cooked, uh, partially cooked, it then uh, frozen and then fat. So the consumer, as it is partially cooked, the cooking time is very less. They only have to do shallow fryer, just uh, heat and then consume it. Semi-cooked meat product. Fried product. Um, as again, fried product, it could be a deep fried product, stirred fried product, fat frying, or again, you know, all the air frying. So, frying is one way by which the product could be uh, preserved, and this fried product ought to be stored only at low temperature. So, frying, it increases the color, texture, and flavor of the product, and color to the product, and flavor to the product. Uh, and you get lots, you get to see lots of ready to eat product in the market, like burgers. Uh, bread cutlets, lots of ready to eat products is available in the market. Uh, designer meat product, um, so designer meat product, <clears throat> now you enhance the uh, nutrition of the animal. For example, if it's poultry, uh, poultry is fed with components rich in antioxidants, something like omega 3 fatty acids. So, finding meat that which you get will have. Enhanced nutrition profile, and this is called the designer meat product. You get designer egg in which the omega 3 fatty acid is increased, or any vitamins, minerals of your choice could be increased. And this is called as designer meat product. This is mainly done to enhance the nutrition profile of the meat or the egg. A meat pickle, a meat pickle is you now get to see in any supermarket. A meat is preserved, beet, egg, egg is pickled. Um, um, chicken meat is pickled, uh, mutton is pickled, pork is pickled, lots of pickle, almost all meat is now pickled and the demand for the pickled meat is also increasing and this is the general composition of uh, pickle preparation. Uh, now you get to see pickle products in most of the supermarkets and the demand for the pickle product is highly increasing. One is easy to prepare and then it may not be refrigerated because it contains uh, uh, good amount of salt, oil, and other spices, it becomes self stable. Uh, vegetable extended product is now this is again um, uh, new, uh, where the meat are incorporated with the vegetables while processing or during fermentation. The main purpose is to increase the nutritional profile of the final product. So, where you get the um, antioxidants fibers and flavonoids, you have the combination of both. When you take combination of both vegetables and the meat, you get both the proteins and other uh, nutrients that is present in the uh, vegetables, so it becomes a complete food. Few of the meat processing equipment that could be used or needed is like meat grinder, as I told you, if you want like this to help in grinding of a particle size structure, and then it could be uh, formed into any shapes. Uh, meat timber, and this is for uh, cutting of the meat, and meat ball forming or any shape which you want. The dye could be stained, changed because dimension or the uh, that prepared that could be fed into the hopper, and you can vary the uh, dye to get the required shape and size. When you want to optimize, when you want to increase the capacity, um, so these are the devices that is required. And meat mincer is the basic device, so which help in mincing the meat. And this is the smoking or curing chamber uh, if you want to prepare a smoked or cured product. And this is again a basic device, bowl chopper. So the bowl rotates and pushes the meat through a rotating blade and that helps in chopping the meat. 
and this meat could be used in preparation of sausages. And you can also offer supper, meat, I mean, sausage filler uh, if you wanted to prepare sausages. And um, uh, other meat preservation techniques, so no meat commonly in India, the most common way by which meat is preserved is by chilling or freezing. So when you freeze it, you will have a longer shelf life. Well, that is the preservation of meat by low temperature. Even in any developed countries, chilling and freezing is the most common way by which the uh, meat is preserved. In high temperature preservation, um, now you get canned product. All the meat, the internal organs, offal, edible internal organs are now canned. Uh, and you also have retard processing, retard processing where the um, product or prepared curry is uh, heated in a retard to a particular temperature and time, held at that uh, time and temperature for a particular time, it is then cooled. And this becomes self-stable product, it need not be refrigerated. Lots of retard processed curry is available in the market, egg curry, chicken curry, fish curry. Lots of retard processed curry is available in the uh, market. All that which we need is only a return processing unit and a chilling unit. And uh, other way by which the meat could be preserved, as we already discussed, uh, curing uh, is one of the oldest methods followed by smoking. Uh, smoking of different classifications. Um, uh, again, drying. Drying is one of the very basic and oldest method of preserving uh, meat. I already discussed about intermediate moisture meat. Freeze drying, the demand for the freeze dried meat is now increasing. Again, the minced uh, product. Uh, could be shaped to the required shape, it is then freeze dried, and that could be used in soups or whatever you product that which we wanted to prepare. And then lots of other technologies also now used in preservation of meat irradiation. So, irradiation will not increase the temperature of the product and uh, it helps in destroying the microorganisms which will be responsible for the spoilage of the product. But this irradiated meat has to be. Um, Frozen. It should be stored only at low temperature and there are lots of antibiotics or chemicals or biopreservatives that can also be used in preserving the meat. The demand for the uh, lab grown meat is increasing. Now uh, the uh, carbon footprint, the amount of water consumption is all the issue nowadays. So the demand for the lab grown meat is also increasing. Uh, first lab grown burger uh, uh, in 2013 by a Dutch scientist. Um, so this, uh, the uh, cells are cultivated in the lab and formed to the required shape. And this, the demand for this product is also increasing. And the demand for plant-based meat is also increasing. People are talking about being vegan, being non-vegetarian, being vegetarian. So this will uh, mimic the properties of the meat. It will look like a meat. And it will have uh, ingredients which are a substitute for the meat. Um, it looks taste, feel, everything will be like a meat. And mostly it is replaced by soya, pea protein or wheat gluten. And these are the industries uh, which are into uh, plant-based meat, beyond meat, if possible foods, cargill, bone liver. These are the industries which is into this plant-based meat. Hello. Um, um, fat, the process of extracting fat. Uh, from the animal is called rendering. Again, we have different methods. The most common is wet and dry rendering. Uh, when um, the fat is extracted from beef, it is called tallow. When that is extracted from pork, it is ca called uh, lard. And from cow's milk, I mean, uh, it's, it's butter. Um, it, it is uh, because of the flavor of the lard and tallow. It has got number of applications even in the food industries. So rendering is the process by which the fat is extracted from the uh, meat tissues. Uh, beef is uh, tallow is from beef and lard is from pork. Uh, the demand for pet food is now highly increasing, especially the dog food. Uh, this pet meat, the meat which cannot be used for human consumption or used in preparation of pet food. Uh, inedible poultry products, um, internal organs, other often which is not edible or converted, mixed with other ingredients and shaped, shaped and processed to make pet foods. Uh, the pet food sector is 2,300 world business nowadays. The 85 percentage of the pet food is for dog food. And the demand for the pet food is highly increasing. Meat packing, uh, so meat packing uh, after it is processed, 
or even if it is after primary processing, packaging becomes very important. Um, so packaging protects the meat, protects the um, uh, oxidative degradation from the meat. Uh, the number of ways by which we can pack the product either by using shrink wrap or vacuum packing. Uh, retard, which we already discussed, this is a retarding unit where the curry, uh, semi-cooked curry is filled inside the pouches. It isn't retarded uh, for a particular temperature and time. And this product becomes shelf stable minimum six months to maximum one, one and a half years shelf life. This is called retard packing of the product. Canning, uh, canning is uh, very common now, uh, uh, be it fish, egg, the whole uh, chicken meat, all meats are now canned. Uh, canned again, there are lots of improvement in packaging where these sensors are incorporated into the packaging material. Lots of sensors are now uh, available in the market, which gives which give signal to the um, uh, where where the, pro will the uh, shelf life of the product, the integrity of the product, the quality of the product, microbial stability of the product, and lots of sensors are now used into the meat packing industry. If there is, uh, there could be a signal of change in the color. So that indicates the degradation of the meat. Accordingly, uh, the meat will be uh, used first like that. Uh, modified atmosphere packing is another way by which the meat could be uh, packed to have extended shelf life. Where you modify the gas composition because higher the amount of oxygen, uh, more will be the rancidity. So you alter the gas composition and that will have a longer shelf life. As already told you, it could be shrink wrapped, uh, wet compact. Both the uh, meat, primarily processed meat, or products. And these are the few commercially available meat products: um, curries, rolls, kebabs, uh, Maggi noodles, all that which we know. Now, lots of these, these are the retard packed uh, curries, instant curries, which is available. You only have to microwave it. Uh, these are ready to eat products, just heat it and then you can consume it. And luggage and uh, these kind of pillows, uh, pizza pillows, uh, or the products that is available in the uh, market. Instant biryani is all available in the market. All that you only have to um, just heat it and consume it. And uh, chicken uh, soup powder, nor uh, is now very popular in the chicken noodles. So these are the few products which is available in the market. So this is all about my presentation. If you have any doubt, I can clarify. So the demand for the processed product is increasing, but still it's a long way to go. The mindset to change. Uh, to have processed product extensively in the Indian market. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, participants, if you have any question, you can write in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. You can talk with ma'am. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to know, like, uh, are we self-sufficient in processing meat and poultry products or are we reporting still? Ma'am, self-sufficient is that the demand is actually very, very less, ma'am. I When I even take a class for students on meat or poultry processing, when I ask them, do you yeah. prefer meat or fresh meat? 99% of them prefer only fresh meat. Mm. So the demand is still very less. So if the demand is more, then processed product will be easily available in the market. The demand is still very less, ma'am. We are still concerned about the uh, safety of the processed meat. And plenty of raw material, I mean, fresh meat is available in the market anytime. Chicken meat, anytime it is available, fresh meat. So people prefer taking fresh than the processed meat. We are self sufficient based on the demand. If the demand is more, definitely the processed product will be more. We process only less than 3% of what we produce. It's because the demand is less. Ma'am? 
Maitla ma'am. But still, uh, the um, product like nuggets, cutlet, all that frozen product, frozen product is the demand is greatly increasing. Um, it's because of the, uh, I mean, uh, um, youngsters who prefer that even when their parents are not at home, that he is easily able to cook it and consume it. So the demand is increasing, but it's very at slow rate. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, participants, if you have any question, you can write in the chat box or simply talk with ma'am. Ma'am, participants are asking for your presentation. We can provide. I'll give it to you, Priya. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Write in the chat box. Ma'am is here to clarify your doubts regarding this PPT or apart or any challenges. See, rather selling the meat as such, uh, meat or fish, rather selling it as such. Even if we could make into various cuts, various cuts after it is cleaned, if it's neatly packed. The demand is very, very high because now everybody is busy. Everybody is busy. They really don't have time to clean and spend too much time in kitchen. So when